If you're not unmuted, you can unmute yourself. Does anyone have a question? Give it back to us. Do I have a question, Derek? Yes. <laughs> it's good to come to this class and really be reminded that there's a possibility of enlightenment is a possibility for anyone, least of all myself. Could you speak about that importance of remembering every day the possibilities that are life is? Uh, yes, uh, look, we're all born with the instruments to do it. We all have the tools. We come into the world with minds, with breath, with will, with need. We come into world very innocent, sweet. You know, there's almost, it's almost like pure joy that's born, you know, when a child is born. You know, and somewhere along the line, it all goes haywire, you know. And uh, it's like regaining paradise lost. But the miracle is we have all the instruments, you know, to do it. And we need to apply them internally to open and develop a system in ourselves that's directly connected to higher energy or God or whatever one wants to call it. That is the commitment that a human being needs to make living here whether it's doing what I teach or what somebody else teaches, there has to be that kind of commitment. And without that kind of commitment, uh, it's just time and reincarnation until one beats their head against the wall enough to where they finally realize is really so the best way out of town is up. So what I'm saying is, you know, enlightenment is a real possibility in this lifetime. Uh, everybody, almost everybody, I wouldn't say everybody, is putting it off. I have this, I have that, I got the other, I got the other, my did, da da, 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 hub, da, hub, da. I, you know, I've listened, I've heard every excuse imaginable about why people procrastinate. And to me, none of it makes sense. I mean, look, even to do these classes, you know, in the Americas where I teach these classes, you know, it's four hours a week. There are 165 hours in a week. <laughs> if you can't find four hours to invest in developing a spiritual life, then, you know, there's, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. And I, and it's that kind of commitment, not only to what I do, but any kind of spiritual work. And thank God that this work is not fanatical. I mean, there are things that you got to invest your whole life. You go live in an ashram, you invest your life. You go live in a monastery, you invest your life. Here it's four hours a week to come and maybe sit down and do the meditation every day for a half hour. That's it. But in that work, in that commitment, in the development of a chakra system, one will organically grow within themselves to where they will become a child of God, they will become a servant of God, they will evolve to a place where their, their being can be used to nurture family, friends, job, you know, uh, students, you know, spiritual meditation practice. Their energy grows to where organically it will, it will do this. And they work out their karma that way by a commitment to serving a higher force of energy and not this thing in the mind, the neurosis, the anxiety in us, the fear, the tension. We master all that stuff by learning to use the mind and the breath properly. Now look, before I met Rudy, I understood a lot of this stuff. I really did. And I, I was developing my own mantras, my own meditation practices, I, anything to try and connect with God. I didn't know how to do it. 
these classes are about learning how to do it. And learning how to do probably the single most difficult thing in the world, and that is have a spiritual life. But it takes commitment. One has to stop procrastinating. I mean, look, you know, in the last month or two, you know, people who were students of mine years ago, I mean, they, they you know, I got notices, they, they died. You know, and there was a part of me that was thinking, well, what if they continued doing this? You know, I mean, I, I don't know what would happen. It's their karma and God takes care of it the way God takes care of it. But I always wonder about that. The commitment to growing, the commitment to an inner life. You know, and that is a very difficult thing to do. There are so many distractions in life. So many, the biggest one is family, biggest distraction. And yet, if one grows spiritually, we can nurture our family on a level that is totally miraculous, totally a miracle. What we can do, you know, to nurture and love and truly take care of the family that we live with. As Rudy always say, it's not this or that, it's this and that, and that, and that. And in order to do it, I have said it a thousand times, the only person we're up against, honestly, is ourselves. We are up against us. We're not up against anyone else. We're up against resistance, tension. We're up against procrastination. We're up against you know, not being able to see two seconds into the future. We're up against so many things, a society that, you know, God knows what the society does, you know, to human beings. In order to overcome all of these obstacles, we need to build a system inside that makes us capable of doing it. You don't build that system by procrastinating. You build it by doing you know, what God has sent for you to do. And then instead of saying it's this or that, it is this and that, and that, and that, and many things that we can do, you know, and live in life and take care of our karma and work out our karma, love the people that are closest to us, at the same time, continue to work to build a system that enables us to do it. And you have to realize what you want to embrace in having a spiritual life is infinite energy in the universe. You want to become one with what's infinite in the universe. It's very powerful. It is, you know, strong. I mean, it's not wimpy energy, you know? I mean, I've mentioned it a thousand times. It's like Krishna in the Bhagavad you know, he reveals himself to Arjuna. God is revealing himself to his disciple. A thousand suns suddenly appeared in the sky. That's what the energy is like. And it's true. We need to be strong. We need to be strong to work out karma. You know, we have to stop jerking ourselves around, patronizing ourselves and patronizing other people and blaming the world for the unhappiness that's inside us. You know, we can master all of that. We are born, we are given the tools to do it. As we emerge from the womb, we have the tools to do this. Then it's a matter of what, how consciously we use them. And yes, one can do it in a, a given lifetime, yes. But they have to be willing to take upon themselves the commitment of doing profound, profound inner work.
And I think this scares a lot of people. It scares people. <laughs> you know, they have some kind of superficial idea in their brain about wanting to have a spiritual life. But the actual doing of it, you got to do what needs to be done in order to have a spiritual life. Beginning with taking advantage of what the universe makes available to you. I mean, I'm certainly not the right teacher for everyone, and thank God for that. But whoever is the teacher that nurtures one and gives one that energy that you gotta, you know, it's a gift. You cannot believe what a gift Rudy was for me. I mean, he said to me things to me like he wants to go to the Middle East. He wants me to come with him. He wanted to live in the Middle East for 10 years. You know, I never dreamed of living in the Middle East. I said, fine, wherever you are, I'll go there. I need my spiritual life. I need my spiritual life. Now, that's my connection with him. Every connection is different and requires a different approach to life. But I knew when I met him, man, where am I going to find another person like this to truly make it possible for me to, first of all, learn how to live with Stuart and forget a spiritual life, learn how to master myself inside and get over my tension, my, you know, my, you know all that stuff. It used to run rampant inside me, guilt and tension and be, me being a victim and this and angry. Anger was a big part of it. Whoa. So where am I going to meet anyone who's going to be able to help me do this? I mean, I had been to swamis and rishis and rabbis and yogis and you know, priests and you know, and after all their talks and lectures and what they my question always was, how do I quiet the mind? And nobody ever had an answer until I met Rudy. And man, I almost ran away from him a hundred times. <laughs> it was not easy until I finally realized, Stuart, you're only up against one person. And he is a reminder of that. You have to learn to master yourself. And his energy and the power of his energy was a consistent reminder to me of that. And it's why I asked him one day, can I come live in your house? Because I knew I needed to be around somebody like that. Who just, you know, it was his presence kept me from bullshitting myself around. It reminded me constantly my need to grow, what I needed to do. And it wasn't easy, you know? It wasn't easy. I don't think I lived in his house for a year. It was the hardest year of my life. But I knew what I needed. And I said, where am I going to find somebody to teach me this kind of thing? And when Muktananda was in New York, there were all these people staying in Rudy's house. You know, people from all over the United States, all over the world, frankly, you know. And I looked at this, I said, Stuart, you know, ask. Now, what I do is a little bit different, a lot different. But, it, you know, I used to have situations like that. I'd have people come and, you know, I... They were always welcome to come stay, live in the house, and use what they're learning there to grow spiritual. I mean, I don't have a place like that anymore. I did have a house in Woodstock that was 7,000 square feet. <laughs> and I was going to buy it 17 acres of land. But seven thousand and a house that was simply to die for. I mean, really, most extraordinary place I ever lived in my life. It was so beautiful this place. 
and I wanted to build a meditation center there. And I had 17 acres of land. I could have built houses and places for people to live there. You know, I think half a dozen people came. So eventually, there are all kinds of complicated people. I wound up selling the place, but what a place that was. Extraordinary, up in Woodstock, top of a mountain. And my whole purpose in buying it was, yeah, I wanted to live in a nice place, but I also, it, it, I saw the room to really build a beautiful ashram there. And then everybody vanished. So what I'm saying, you know, you know, to this day, I don't know where you know, people are. I, I always wonder where that 100, 150 people a week that used to come to my, what happened to them all? <laughs> where are they? I mean, I know what happened to one of them, God bless her. She passed on a month ago. And I hope not another one who passed on a week ago. <clears throat> you know, it breaks my heart. But the thing in life is one has to take advantage of what God gives. I'm not saying everybody should come and live here in Connecticut because I think I'm not going to be living here much longer. You know? But if I find another place, you know, Anyway, I you want enlightenment, it takes that kind of commitment. It really does. And you can't do it on your own terms. You have to do it on God's terms. And that's this and that and that and that. And there are no excuses. You just do what you have to do to grow spiritually, including taking care of your family, Loving your children, your parents, your husbands, your wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, whoever's in your life. Finding a big place for them in your heart because you have become big enough to do this and that and that. Anyone have a question? Anyone else have a question? Stuart? Yes? Uh, when we observe all the craziness going on in the world today, how much of what we see is a reflection of our own inner, inner development? Well, look, Larry, uh, I, don't know. I can't remember one day in my lifetime where this world hasn't been crazy. Not one day where there haven't been famines and wars and people, you know, I mean, just the insanity that goes on here, you know? And I, I made a commitment years ago. I even had a conversation with God about this. And I said, I cannot fix this world of yours. This is your job. I can fix me and I can nurture a handful of people that are willing to learn what I have learned. You know, and I realized years ago, I can fix me. I can get strong enough inside to become completely detached from the lunatics that are in the Republican Party, you know, the Democratic Party. I can detach. I don't have to be involved with these people. I don't, you know, and it's not rejecting and walking away. I am strong enough to look at And what is this teaching me? It's teaching me how I don't want to live. It's teaching me to be grateful that there are other people 
that are politicians and I don't have to do this. You know, everything is a teacher and it depends on how you take the lesson. And if you have any preconception that this world is ever going to be a sane place to live in, you better drop it now. Because it will never become a sane place as long as people are in their heads thinking, imposing ego, will on the world, their opinions, how everybody else should live. <laughs> We're never going to live in a sane place. But we can grow and get stronger than it and detach from it and become happy people looking at the miracle of God as it manifests around us. Even in the crazy people, there are, they are also our teachers. But that completely depends on us, or we can hide in some cave you know, and, and never come out and peek out at the world from this you know, little world that we've created in ourselves. I mean, I'm reading a book like this now. I'm telling you, man, what a, I mean, the guy's a really good writer, but the book is just completely insane. He's, anyway, it's all about that, but he's really, he writes well. The guy I'm talking about, the guy who kind of a, you know, really understands how to write a book, develop characters and this, but man, what a totally mad world they all live in especially the main character. And I keep reading it because I write, it's well written, you know. <laughs> There's something to learn there about how to write, you know, but also about how you don't want to live. <clears throat> I hope it's clear what I'm talking about. And this predisposition, something in our brain that says the world is supposed to be different. I mean, it's just simply a way of, you know, not understanding it'll never be different, but it'll always be there to teach you what you have to do every day, to open, to grow, to develop a chakra system, to build yourself as a human being and get closer to God. And then having the guts to do it. Does anyone else have a question? And to laugh at it, enjoy it, not let it get you down. Don't be a victim. <laughs> not to be a victim. And understand what you see outside yourself. Honestly, I say this a lot, but it's true. It's a mirror image of what goes on inside you. And once you get strong enough to, to really transform that internal weakness and you know anxiety or whatever it is neurosis you know you transform it then you begin to see the world differently the world becomes a different place to live in Does anyone else have a question? Okay, next weekend, uh, Friday night, Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to be holding a retreat here. Um, and I think after, I will probably have a class on Monday and a class in Europe on Tuesday. But then I'm going to take three or four days because I need, this has been, this last 
you know, four or five months have been so powerful. They've been so powerful. I need to just absorb them. So I'm going to take a few days or maybe on Wednesday, Thursday, come back the following Monday, not leaving, but just to absorb everything, just to let everything truly become part of my chemistry so I can bring to you even a higher level of this meditation practice. So I think I need a little vacation. This is after the retreat. The retreat will be next week. And then there's another one in June. And there seem to be more people signing up for it. If you want to come, there's still space open for that one. And then there'll be my birthday retreat in August. So a lot of very intense work coming up. I'm very grateful for it. And I'm very grateful for all of you that are participating in it. You know, and also we're working on doing a, a seven day retreat in France, about an hour from Paris. It looks pretty good that that's gonna happen in July. So I got my work set out for me these next three or four months. You know, and I'm really hoping that I can transfer this energy that's coming through me to all of you. That's what it's for. My job is to pass this on, this amazing work that Rudy gave me, you know, and to pass it on to people that truly want to learn how to get to God. And to even learn that you don't get to God, you're living with God just need to have consciousness. That's all. When it's there, it's there, you know? It's everywhere. It's inside us. It's all around us. It's everywhere. And we just have to get past ourselves to begin to become a witness for this miracle that manifests every day in our life. So God bless you all. And There'll be a class tomorrow evening. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. And thank you. Thank you for dragging out of me, Derek, this talk that I never planned on giving tonight. <laughs> Which not only helps you all, but it helps me too. So God bless you all. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on Monday. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. You're welcome.